Hey there, class. Um, we are here today to talk about two-dimensional kinematics. Now, our idea here in this video is to simply develop a conceptual understanding. Okay, we're not going to do anything really too mathematical, at least as far as calculations go, um, but basically just look at the conceptual understanding of uh, two-dimensional kinematics, the, the hows of, of moving in two dimensions. So let's talk about what this is. So first of all, let's just um, kind of just a recap um, what it means to move in one dimension. Um, something moving in one dimension would move to the left. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the right. This is the left. So an object moving in one dimension would actually move uh, to the left or to the right. An object that moves um, up or down, of course that's down, this is up, um, moving up or down is moving in one dimension as well. Now what our two-dimensional kind of motion looks like, let me just get rid of all these arrows here, two-dimensional motion is kind of um, different because what two-dimensional motion would do is instead of moving to the right or to the left, or an object that's thrown up and then comes back down, an object that moves in two dimensions is going to do something to this effect. So think of a baseball being hit by a, a baseball player, or you know a basketball being shot into a basket. These are, um, this is what it means to move in two dimensions because we have both an upwards part um, as the ball's hit. It kind of, uh, hold on one second, as the baseball's hit, it kind of moves up. But it's also kind of moving to the right as well um, as we, this happens. Okay, so um, what we're looking at here is this this ball um, leaves the ground. It's struck by maybe a bat or something. Um, what actually happens to make it go isn't really as important as the fact that it does travel up and along this path, eventually coming back down and returning to the same level uh, from which it left at a further distance away. Now, I do need to kind of pause for a moment and add a disclaimer here. Um, and the disclaimer that I want to add is that in this, these kind of problems, we will be ignoring air resistance. Now, the reason for this is because air resistance is a force that opposes the motion of objects, but it's directly proportional to the square of that object's velocity, which basically means that every time the object changes its speed, it also changes the amount of force that acts on it. That makes things... Um, much more difficult. In fact, it involves using calculus to solve it. We're going to ignore this um, for all of our problems. So then my question to you is what force is acting on this object? So this is where I want you to stop and think. Uh, again, the question is what force is acting on this object as it flies through the air? All right, so the question was, what force is acting on this object? Uh, I'm going to scroll down here just a little bit, um, and let's talk about this. So again, the idea here is this ball has already been given some initial velocity, and if I wanted to draw its initial velocity, uh, I might draw it something like this. It goes up through the air in kind of a direction as you see right there. We don't really care why it's obtained this, this um, initial velocity. The point is it has this initial velocity. So the question coming back to it was what forces are acting on it? And in this case, the only force that acts on this object is the force of gravity. The force of gravity is a force that acts down. Um, it's always going to act down no matter where you are um, in this duration of this this flight, it's going to always be in a downwards acting direction. Again, we're not concerned about why it obtained this velocity here. All we care about is this this object after it's been struck. So basically, as this ball leaves the ground here, even at this point right here, the velocity is going to look different at this point, but it's still got a gravity force acting down over here. Again, the velocity is going to change because of this force, but the force is going to still be down. Even when we go to the very top of the, the path, the force is still a downwards acting force. Um, even the whole path down here, when we get to the very bottom of our path, 
we uh, also have a downwards force. Now again, we're not talking about what happens after this ball bounces or somebody catches it or something else happens to it. We want to know at that instant it's hitting the ground. So the only forces during this entire flight are the uh, is the force of gravity. All right, so now that we've developed this idea of gravity being the only force acting on it, let's go ahead and um, talk about how this might actually come into uh, problem solving. So first of all, with with our problems, we need to, again, remember that we have x direction motion. We also have y direction motion. Um, I usually like to call, um, I define some positive direction here. Uh, in this case, I called to the right and down positive. You can use any direction um, that's convenient to you. Now, the important thing to know is that when you're solving and you're writing down the things you know about the problem, or the things that are unknown, Here's the big, big idea. You need to keep x and y separated from one another. So you're going to write all your x direction knowns in one section, and then the y direction knowns in another direction. Or in the, uh, you're going to keep them separated from one another. So basically, when it comes down to it, um, when we actually go to solve a problem, what you'd want to do here is you're going to have your x direction knowns and you're going to have your y direction knowns. And these two things, we're going to keep them, we're actually going to keep them separated from one another. Uh, in fact, this is not a delta x, this should be a, a delta y. Let me go ahead and change that because we're dealing with uh, a displacement in the, um, the y direction here. So basically, uh, I'm not going to actually go ahead and solve any problem here. That's uh, for, for future discussion. But I wanted to kind of show you that when we solve a two-dimensional problem, that it pretty much ends up being like two one-dimensional um, problems, where we can treat the motion in the x direction with its knowns. We can treat the y direction um, with its knowns. The only thing that actually connects the two is the time. The time it takes for the object to go up and down is the same time it takes for it to go from here all the way to over here. So again, I'm not going to actually solve any problem here. Um, we're just looking at it in a very conceptual nature. Um, we can solve problems at a later time.